Okay. <coughs> Objects. Here we go. Well, first I'd like to say, yeah, does this look janky? Yes, it does. Does it look extremely basic? Yes, it does. Um, and this is more realistically what you should expect with your first track. Do not expect to go out there and make some hyper realistic track. You are going to defeat yourself sorely. Um, unless you are highly, highly motivated and have a lot of time on your hands. Because it will take a lot of time. And what I mean by that is... Let me pull something up real quick. Um, and you should be happy with it, to be honest. Um, just try to have fun with it your first time around. If you try to take this too seriously, you will have a broken spirit and you will give up. Where is... Is it under ADC? Here's a perfect example. Clutch kickers in a Seto Corsa. Does it... It is a real track in real life. Now, just by looking at this image alone, the Aceto Corsa version does not look anything like this. <laughs> um, does it... If you were to compare side-by-side -side video footage of... ADC clutch, uh, sorry, uh, Aceto Course to Clutch Kickers with real life clutch kickers, it would not resemble. Does it drive like it? No, no, it doesn't. The roads are wider in Aceto, uh, the runoffs are flat. Um, you know, in real life, th these roads are a bit more narrow and the edges are very rough. Where people have consistently dropped the wheel and started to dig holes. It is a rowdy drive. In a Seto Corsa, it is a very wide, flat, smooth drive. So does it drive like clutch kickers? Not really. Um, and visually, it can look pretty generic. But, do people love this track? Yes, they do. Myself included. This is one of the most popular tracks on Aceto Corso. So don't kill yourself. I absolutely do not recommend you trying to gung-ho and create some hyper-realistic track. Does this look janky? Yes, it does. Is this what you should expect? Yeah. And actually, when you get in-game, it's going to look a hundred times better than this. Okay, so just, yeah, just take it slow, try to enjoy it. So we've got our terrain, we've got our roads, driving all smooth, you should not have lumpy issues, you've got your little road texture that you want. Objects. This is where people actually start to smile when it comes to track making, because you kind of start to see it come together. Oh my god gosh i forgot something with roads i will create a 3.5 anyway um objects no i'll do it right here roads real quick my mistake there's bezier i totally forgot to cover bezier the only difference is when you place a bezier road they come with these pink dots and they are just uh, nodes that operate on the axis of the main node. So these two nodes are attached to this node. So if I select my move node tool, I can actually fine tune the curvature. The curvature isn't just kind of handled for me. And all the same concepts apply. If I hold X, I can move this one in on the X axis, move this one in on the X axis. If I hold why I can tilt this at a more uh, specific uh, way because of these extra nodes uh, and yeah that's just what what that does okay sorry 
about that. Let's go back to objects. Objects. Here we go. Easy enough. I want to drop a single object. Okay. I want to put a tent down. You want to make sure the only thing you have selected is the tent. If you have multiple selected, it's going to randomize what gets placed. So we don't want that. I want to place a tent. So let's go to where I think my pit will be. Somewhere around here. Put a tent down. Sweet. Now, if you hover your mouse up here, you'll see this little properties button right away um, it shows you its position based on XYZ you don't have to worry about this uh, LOD in and out level of detail or load distance however you want to think of it I've heard both terms used its default is 2000 objects were created by somebody and brought into racetrack builder by somebody and that somebody either knew that the default should be 2000 or they didn't so you may see all kinds of numbers here you may see 200 uh, you may see 500 you may see 4000 2000 is the default and I've heard you can make all of your LOD outs zero, which will increase performance. I've tried it. I didn't notice anything. You can go ahead and try it and uh, make that decision for yourself whether or not it does or doesn't increase performance. I will typically just leave them at a default of 2000. Right now, by default, it's set to rest on the ground, which I want. I don't want floating tents. So thank you. I want it to cast a shadow. Yes. Um, do I want it to be drivable? No, this is not a driving surface. Do I want it to be collidable? No, only because with objects, the collision is going to operate based on this big yellow cube. So I will not be able to drive under the tent. I will slam into this cube wall. So I do not want this to be collidable. Do I want it to be movable? No. I don't want the tent to go flying when I hit it. Or maybe you do. But for me, no. So that's it. Right? I've got my tent. Uh, actually, let me pause this real quick. Okay, we are back. Um, now, shadows are great, shadows are wonderful, shadows make everything look beautiful, but shadows are expensive. Now, I don't want to scare you off with that. You can add a good bit of shadows, but you just want to keep that in the back of your head always. And we're not thinking uh, individually, we're thinking in totality, right? So, first, we go to terrain, hit W. This is the expense of our terrain. We need to add that. We'll go to our road. Select our road. This is the expense of our road. It's roads, plural. Okay, then add that with, you can also hit W on an object to show you the wireframe that it's constructed with the expense of our object and then furthermore adding the expense of casting a shadow and you're gonna want to always keep all of these things in mind as you fill your track up with stuff right now this track is virtually naked I mean we've got lots of room to add objects and shadows and whatever else you can think of so <clears throat> that's adding a single object simple enough uh, remember, if you have multiple selected, it's going to randomize what it places. This is what I call a hotbar. Uh, right now, uh, there are subcategories, just cars, just cones. So if I select my cone group, it's actually a group. It's called a group. This is a cone group. And I select everything within the group. And I click single object. And I start clicking. It's randomizing 
exactly which objects from that group it's placing. Now, this is important because this is an all objects hotbar, which all of these objects exist in one of these groups. So you can customize this. So let's say, you know, uh, I don't like any of these bleachers. They're pretty hideous. So if you double click on any piece, it'll open up this screen. And if you, you can select a group or select all objects and I can add this pit marker board here. Uh, sorry, just some, not pit marker board, but marker board um, can add this green tire stack here. And I can add whatever else I want, a railing. And then as I click, right, it's kind of randomizing whatever I have selected in this hotbar. Just keep in mind that you can customize this hotbar uh, and not just that, but what you see is not everything. Just because you click here and you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven signs doesn't mean that's all there is. Uh, you've got these empty spaces, which I like to utilize. Double click, open up all objects. And there's more than meets the eye. Okay, keep that in mind. Now, if you want to back out of here without selecting something, you can see if if I attempt to click, uh, it won't let me. You just hit escape. Now, you're not seeing as much as I'm seeing. Probably not. Uh, maybe you are, but you know you're not. You don't have very much to work with by default. So what you want to do is you want to go to open up Steam and go to Racetrack Builder and then you'll see this button Community Hub click on that and then you will see Workshop click on Workshop and it's gonna appear blank but if you just click around somewhere just click there we go you'll get this to pop and right now mine are all checked but yours will appear as green plus signs and all you need to do is click these green plus signs and subscribe and once you do this all of these will appear in your racetrack builder so just subscribe to everything get yourself all the objects you can get You've got trees an ambulance Stuff like that. This is the most useful one, in my opinion. Tie super signs. I'll show you that later. Uh, more tires, some wooden railings. You know, you get the idea. So subscribe to everything. Once you do that, when you go to edit X packs, this window will pop up. You'll see those additional things that you subscribe to here, and all you do is just uh, double click and activate them once you activate them you you might see some new groups if the person who created those object packs properly put them into groups they will appear within these groups if you don't and they may or may not have a thumbnail but if you hover your mouse it tells you the name of the object and its location its X pack name and its group name but anyway don't mind that you can just click on all objects uh, we'll open one of these up and you'll see the new items that you activated and we'll hit escape okay so that you should have a little more objects there are resources out there that have I mean hundreds of packs of object I'll cover that in another video and also how to create or import your very own objects anything that you so desire but that is a little more advanced so right now we'll just work with what we got so the next one is straight line Okay, 
uh, straight line and it is what it sounds like if I have one tent selected and it's set at a separation of three you can play with this value if you want and I pull it I get a straight line of tents it is what it is and they're all selected which is very handy and I'll show you why in a little bit I'll show you right now so if you remember what we did to the first one now that these are all selected immediately just the same way I take care of my roads right away I take care of my objects right away immediately I'll go to properties make sure I'm in the object properties tab see what the LOD is at you can adjust it accordingly if you care to default 2000 rest on ground cast shadow and we're good and that has affected all of them so I don't need to do them individually I will put this here and if I have multiple selected and I go to make a straight line it, oh shit that's why I don't like those undo these guys and I make a straight line it's going to do that with the multiple objects and uh, and again they're all selected that's handy so instantly while they're all selected I will check the LOD cast shadow cool um, and the reason you want to do that while they're all selected is because once you uh, grab an object out of here now you're only selecting this and if I were to change anything here it's only affecting this single object as to where I took care of all of them together so we will and then of course all those rules apply I can draw a circle highlight all of them and delete um, lasso lasso is a free draw basically so if I just draw a funky shape places them and here you can select the density at which they pop uh, minimum separation um, and keep off road so let's do this again lasso keep off road if I draw a funky shape around a road oh it didn't listen okay let's try a different one let's try trees so I have keep off road selected I believe it's not listening because this is not a main track this is a random piece of road so let's go back grab our porta potties and let's try it on our main road here draw a circle and yes it avoided the road so because this has a, it's not a track it doesn't loop into itself it's not being recognized as a track this is what's being recognized as our track here so it obeyed that keep off road I mean that may come in handy uh, when you're placing trees or something you know but I mean <laughs> This density is too crazy. Let's get a small bush density of 20 and draw it. So you can see it keeps it off the road. And they're all highlighted. So again, I would not ever give a tree collision because you see these big yellow boxes protruding into the road. The collision is going to operate off of that. So you'll be driving along and you will slam into these boxes and it will not be pleasant now they're all highlighted so I check 2000 LOD I'm okay with that cast shadow this is a decision you've got to make yourself this is a lot of objects that you're asking to cast a shadow in a very tight space so you have to consider performance here would I suggest this no I wouldn't I would not make these cast a shadow like that 
I would show you um, what I would do later. One thing you can do is you can cleverly, when you're done placing all your trees, go along the road and only make some of them cast a shadow. I'll take this one, make this one cast a shadow. I'll take this one and make this one cast a shadow. I'll take this one, make this one cast a shadow. So we get some shadow but not all of this unnecessary performance hitting uh, stuff. And what are the expense of these trees even before the shadow? Well, you hit W and you can see it. All they are are two planes of paper. Very cheap. But remember, you're asking two planes of paper to cast a shadow. So each one of these, you're asking two planes cast a shadow so the shadows are essentially double of what you're looking at and it can get much much worse the more this is about as simple as an object can get two planes of paper but it very much gives the effect uh, that you might desire it looks very 3d so there's that um, and then roadside Let's say if I go to roadside is like the same with keep off track. If I go to objects, select these blue cones and then you got your density, uh, keep off road, etc. Even spacing, normal distribution, distribution minimum and maximum. It's never going to get that serious in my opinion, but let's do this. Let's draw a circle. Oh my gosh, Troll Z, we need to up this density to 100. So let's throw some cones down here. Oops. Okay, 200. I want more. Okay, so you see, it placed it roadside, which almost looks the exact same as lassoing and keeping it off the road. The only difference is what you can do is you can select left side only. Control Z. Right side only. Control Z. That's pretty nifty. You might have a use for that. Though that, that type of stuff to me only comes in handy when you're working with foliage. Um, things like cones and stuff you're going to want to place yourself. Okay, now let's fix these tents up. Right, so we're gonna go back to our single object mode and grab our move object tool, click this object, and this gizmo will appear. Now, uh, it works the same as anything else. You'll see common uh, functions. The cone is going to stretch it. The line is going to slide it. Same with this one. The blue cone will stretch it this way. The line is going to slide it. And same with the vertical axis. The green cone will stretch it. And this line will slide it. Okay. Um, what else? Control Z, Control Z, Control Z. Let's get it back to normal. There we go. Okay. And you've got these curved lines. These are rotational tools. So you've got one that's a roll. You've got this blue curve. You've got a pitch. However you want to think of it. And you've got this green one, which is a yaw. So you can rotate it this way. Now, there's ways that you can be highly inefficient. So let's say I wanted these tents to be a little bigger and I want them to be straight with the road. They came in crooked. Well, if I were to be highly inefficient, I would do like this. I want them to be 
a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger, and then rotate it. One. Okay, and click on this one. A little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger, and rotate it. Two. And they're not exact. You will never get it exact. That's one way to do it. Or. There is this circle tool, this ball. This ball, if you hover your mouse over it, will turn yellow. Now, if you click and drag this, it's going to resize all dimensions proportionately. And I'm dragging it upward, clicking and dragging upward. And let's say, oh shit, I made it too big, right? Well, click and drag downward right this is a clean click and drag upward but but shrinking is a lot more temperamental so if I try to click and drag downward it begins to shrink before it bugs out and starts to get big again and you go oh fuck I'm trying to make it smaller and it's getting bigger so what you want to do is just kind of short controlled burst so just click and drag just little shrinks click and drag click and drag click and drag click and drag so enlarging is a lot easier than shrinking but once you get used to it it's easy enough right so what if I want all of these to be exactly the same I don't want them to be slightly different from each other because I'm not perfect in doing this well you can either hold shift and click select all of them or you can just draw a circle and now this gizmo is reacting to all of them or they're all going to react to this one gizmo so anything I do will affect all of them but I want them to be proportionate so I'm going to use the ball make them slightly bigger and I will just rotate all of them together then of course you can fine-tune this right you can move this guy tilt it a little bit move this guy tilt it a little bit move this guy tilt it a little bit etc so things like cones I know I'm going to be putting a lot of cones around my track and I like the orange cones. So what I'll do is I'll get a lasso density 200 and I'll make me a little quarry of cones. Bam. Okay. Now while they're all selected, it's very handy. I will check my LOD. This one's at 200. I'll make it 2000 for consistency sake. I want them to cast a shadow and I want them to be movable. I want them to go flying when I hit them. Um, if you sec, uh, select collide, they will become concrete walls. You will slam into these and your car will do a 360 flip and everybody will complain about the concrete cones in your track. So you either make them movable or you don't select any of them. And what's going to happen is they'll be there, you'll see them, but your car will be able to pass through them. So people won't be yeeting cones all over the track. It'll preserve their position, but it won't make their car do a kickflip. But I like them to be movable. And while they're all selected, I'll use this tool here. Pull the gizmo up. I want my, these are little stubby fat guys. I want, I want a taller, more slender cone. These are the cones I want. There we go. That looks good. Oh, it's a little tall. Bring it down. These are the cones I want. Okay, so now I got a bunch of them. And they're all ready to go. And as I go through my track, let's say hmm, I want to put some cones here to warn these guys about the trees. Just draw a little circle. Hold shift. And right now I'm holding shift. I'm holding the left mouse key because I'm grabbing these and 
I'm clicking my wheel and scrolling my wheel at the same time. So three fingers to drag myself over here. We'll zoom in. And then I can put these cones down. And I know they're all good to go. They're movable. They cast shadows. They're all the same exact size and shape. And that's all cool. And then I can either put these back or just delete these, right? So cool. I've got my little quarry of cones that I'll use throughout the construction of my track. That's one way to do it. Another way is with copy and pasting, which probably is more efficient. Um, you just click one. And if I hold the letter C, click here, it pastes it. And I'm still holding C. Paste, 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 paste. paste. And if you wanted to do a group, draw a circle, grab a group of cones, go over here, hold C, and click. And I pasted the entire group. The only thing is, they're not parallel with the road edge. Now, you would think, okay, hold shift, and I'll rotate so it lines up. Uh, that's not going to work because they are single objects. We are in single object mode. So they're all going to rotate on their individual axes. So you would still need to grab them one by one and move them. All right. But uh, it was pretty quick to get them over here. And let's say, okay, I'm done putting cones around my track. That's all the cones I want. Go to my quarry and just draw a circle and delete. Um, I think that's it. Local and global. Don't worry about that. Uh, you, you, won't, you probably won't be using it. You're just going to be enjoying looking through all the objects. Oh, pit. Okay, let's put a little pit sign here where the, uh, the pit is. So I'll place. Oops. There we go. Place one. Cool. And you can see this box on this wireframe. This is a very cheap object. It's only if it's got eight sides and each side is divided into two triangles. That's 16 faces. Uh, that is very, very cheap. So no problem. Cast a shadow. I'll give it a LOD of 2000 just for consistency. And I want this to be collidable because the box is very tight. And I'll put this here. I don't want people driving. I want people to hit this. So there's our pit. And we'll just rotate it. And you do that all around your track. Some nice objects going on. Um, what else is there? That's pretty much it. I covered the copy and paste tool. Trees I tend to do last because you see how big their box is. Their box is really obnoxious. And what's gonna happen is let's say I wanna let's say I wanna click this cone. Wait, let me do it. <laughs> there we go. I'm trying to click this cone. And the tree is getting in the way. So I tend to put trees last. If you zoom in very close, you'll be able to. Oh no, even still, it's still grabbing the tree. So then you're gonna go through this annoying process. Like get out of the way, grab the cone. Okay, come back. I just put trees last. I do tr trees are one of the last things I do, especially if they're roadside, because it's just gonna be a headache for you. Um, yeah. That's that's uh, that's everything for now with objects. Later on, I'll go much more into detail 
about uh, getting your own objects in there. Well, let's cover one last thing. So there's a railing here. Let's say I want to place a railing right here. Okay. Now, you can see the box ain't bad, but you will be hitting the box instead of the railing. And if the collider mesh on your vehicle is correct, you're going to be, uh, your front bumper is going to hit this. If the collider is sunken into the vehicle, it might appear that you're touching the railing, but really, really, it's just waiting for the two colliders to meet. So the collider is going to operate off of this yellow box, and maybe you don't want that. And so we'll take a, an early look into the next cat uh, two categories later, which is a wall. If you jump over to walls real quick, you'll see this do not cross. This is a collider mesh. That's all it is. And so I will place it in a straight line and I will place this here. And the reason this is so important is for one, you can get more accurate collision, right? If I adjust this. So now you will collide with the railing as you're supposed to. Uh, and two, this collider mesh is the most optimized collider mesh. If I go back to my objects and I just give this railing collision, uh, two things can happen. It's either going to, right now I can tell you, it's going to operate off of this yellow box. But in some instances, if we hit W, you can see the wire framing of the actual object some collide collision uh, will be based on this wireframe of the actual object now, as you can imagine let's say you're trying to drift and you know bumper ride this railing this is gonna be very upsetting for the car because each individual face is a as a collision is becoming a collision mesh it and and the seto is already very unhappy with collision it's very poor collision physics i mean you might tap this at 25 miles an hour and do a 1080 triple backflip so it's not optimal to just give things collision this way i do it a lot you, you just have to make those calculated decisions is it something that you're going to be driving up against or is it just a wall that you don't want people to drive through if it's just a wall yeah it's fine you know they shouldn't be trying to hit it anyway but if it's you know a particular part of the track where people rub their fenders you want to make it more pleasant so what you would do as far as collision physics so you would use this or if you want it to be more specific like this you would use this wall and this uh, colliding mesh right here and it looks uh, hideous right now but you will not see this in game at all you just have to trust and you don't need to touch anything you don't need to change any LODs or cast shadows or anything do not touch it just place it and you have a beautiful collider mesh right here. It's the last you'll have to do. It will be invisible uh, from here forward. So that's the last thing I want to cover with the uh, objects and collision. Okay, the next one, uh, string objects. <laughs>